children. It's Grandma B here, and it is time for Grandma Reads 2019. So some of you have been getting books and videos from me for many, many years, almost 15 years. And each year, Grandpa and I try to find a good thing to talk about and then find books that go along with that idea. So I got to thinking about what you all like to do and what we like to do together. And we spend a lot of time outdoors when we're together in the summer. We like to swim and hike and play games outside. And some of you like to grow things outside. You like to plant gardens or grow flowers. So I started thinking about how we take care of our world and our earth because we love to spend so much time outdoors. And it's important that we make sure that our water's clean and the air is clear and the plants can grow. So all of our books this year are about helping take care of the earth. Now I need you to listen very carefully for whose names I say the book belongs to because we're not going exactly in order of age. So sometimes there might be somebody that's a little older or younger with the same book. So you have to listen carefully so you can find your own book. This very first one is called Love the Earth and it's by a guy named Julian Lennon, which if you remember last year, we talked a lot about the Beatles. One of the Beatles is John Lennon. So this Julian Lennon is related to him and I want you to see if you can figure out how. All right, that's a challenge. So this book is for Nash and for William. So Nash and William, you need to listen up. Love the earth. Now there are some big words in this book sometimes, but there's also cool places that you can touch and do things. So you can do that when you're getting to know the book. So here it goes. Our planet has many different types of features. Oceans, rivers, mountains, valleys, deserts, and more. So you can look at the picture and it says, can you touch anything that you have seen or visited? So if you visited an ocean or a mountain or a valley or a desert, you can touch the places that you have seen or visited, okay? The magic white feather is a symbol of love. Loving the earth means wanting to protect and nurture all of our land and water, all our creatures and all our people. Now, if your imagination power is ready, is your imagination power ready? I hope so. Shake the white feather and turn the page to change it into the most fabulous airplane in the world. So you have to shake the feather and see if you can turn it into the plane. Cool. The white feather flyer will show you how to love the earth. To get underway, press the love button to gather all your imagination power. Point the book up and let's go. So you push the love button and up we go. Let's see where we go. <gasps> oh, the butterflies. Look at all those butterflies. A migration is the annual journey of animals from one region to another. These monarch butterflies migrate across North America in the millions. It's the largest migration in the world. Look how beautiful they are. Oh, do you like butterflies? They're so pretty. Monarch butterflies need to eat milkweed plants as they cross the continent. But too many of their milkweed habitats have been lost. Oh no. Without food, these butterflies can't complete their journey. These monarchs need our love and our help. Touch the milkweed button and see what you can do. Ooh, touch that button. You did it! You planted a milkweed garden. Now the butterflies can eat and complete their migration. To love the earth even more, tap the fly button, tilt the book up, and we're on our way. So you push the button and up we go on another adventure. Many villagers live too far from hospitals to get to them on foot. It's safer for this mom to give birth in a hospital. What can loved ones do to help her get there? Press the transport button to change the flyer into, what's it gonna turn into? <gasps> the White Feather Flyer Village Ambulance. 
This kind of transport is fast and light and can carry people over rough terrain where there are very few roads. That expectant mom will be there in no time. Congratulations, we've got more to do. Gather your transportation power. Press the fly button and fly on. Do you see the button, Will, and Natch? Push it, boing! Here we go now, where are we going? The oceans connect us to each other and some of the most wondrous creatures in our world live in the ocean. So why do we dump plastic in our water? Plastic is poison to sea creatures. Let's love them enough to protect them. Press the land button and get ready to help. Ready? What can we do to help the poor animals in the ocean? Love is why we're here. Help is what we give. Oh, look, they're here. They're picking up all the trash. They're helping the sea creatures. We can solve any problem when we work together. Now let's fly again. Are you ready? Push the fly button. Here we go. Imagine a world where all children have a right to education. Yet in some places, girls and young women don't get to go to school. Press the build button and let's see if we can change that. Here's the build button. We can, we're building schools for girls to attend. Girls must be safe to learn and follow their dreams. Thank you for giving them brighter futures everyone deserves. Now press the fly button for more adventures. <gasps> Something very special happens here. Do you know what it is? It's the giant California gray whales. They're traveling from the Arctic to these peaceful waters to nurse their newborn calves. Do you know the baby whales were called calves? in these peaceful waters. So press the white feather flyer sailboat button to be a part of it. Okay, we're going there to be by the whales. Woo, that looks fun. For centuries, gray whales were hunted by humans. Many are still hurt in collisions with ships or they get tangled up in fishing nets. Can you press the shelter button to make a protected area called a sanctuary where they'll be safe? Ready? Push the button. Yay, you did it. You're spreading love and hope. We're saving the whales. Good job. We are all one people, humanity. We have one home, planet Earth. Let your love grow and grow and grow. There goes the flyer. And then there's a poem in here that's a song that I bet you can find the music to later if you'd like to hear the song. So that is Love the Earth by Julian Lennon. All right, this next book is for Lizzie, JJ, and Everett. And it is called The Lonely Polar Bear. You guys ever seen a polar bear at the zoo? This is about a polar bear that lives way up north in the cold, and he's a lonely polar bear. So we will find out why. There's a big snowstorm. Ooh. There was a snowstorm that lasted for many days. The strong wind was wailing and crying. When the storm was finally over, a polar bear slowly crawled out of an icy cage. He was quite small. Oh, it's a baby. The little polar bear wandered around the vast snow-covered land, looking for his mommy and his brothers, and suddenly he saw a strange thing. A little spirit girl in the sky. See the spirit girl? Whee! Look at them. He says, little friend. They're having fun. The little spirit girl climbed onto the polar bear's back and they walked on and on. They traveled very far. A long, long, long way together. Oh, well, that's fun. One night, they saw an amazing sight. What is happening? <gasps> the little spirit girl said, look, bear, the northern lights. My family is coming. Here comes the spirit girl's family. It's time to come home, they said. 
And so Polar Bear kept walking on his own. Puffins joined him as he swam. You see the puffins? The Polar Bear continued swimming. The fish quickly swam past him. I guess they're better swimmers. When the polar bear reached land, he continued walking. The elks greeted him with a big, hello. Elks. Hello, said the polar bear, but he still hadn't found his family. What is that? He met some noisy friends. Noise. And he met some quiet friends. What are those? Maybe white foxes. Time passed and the polar bear grew older. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. But he wasn't as big as he should have been. There was little for him to eat on the slowly melting ice. The pieces of ice drifted farther and farther. Without his spirit friend, he felt lost. The polar bear fell asleep and began to dream. He saw the dark winter sky filled with glowing sparkles. Long time no see. Oh, it's his friend, the spirit girl. Lonely bear, I have always kept an eye on you. You can only see our light in winter when the sky is dark, but I am always here. It's okay, spirit friend, don't worry. I made many other friends. I'm not lonely anymore. Somewhere in the snowy North Pole, a polar bear is sitting quietly and peacefully, enjoying his beautiful sky filled with northern lights. And then in the back of the book, it tells about some of the polar bears that are having a hard time and places that you can go to learn more about how to take better care of the earth and our polar bears. So that is the Lonely Polar Bear story. book is for Amos and Shiasia, and it's called Not For Me Please, I Choose to Act Green. Do you know what it means to act green? Does it mean we walk around and pretend like our skin is green, like the Hulk? No, I don't think so. Maybe you will learn a little bit more as we read this book. What does it mean to act green? Another cool thing about this book is the stories up here on the top, but then there's more things to read here on the bottom, and I'm not going to read the bottom parts today. But you can find out a lot of other cool things by reading all the things that are on the bottom. There once was a day when I didn't act green, a time when I thought things would always stay clean. I didn't think twice of the choices I made, the impact they had or the damage that stayed. My actions were based on the ease brought to me, with never much thought to our air, land, and sea. Is that you? Do you ever think about the air, land, and sea? But my thoughts around this changed in a flash when I noticed the damage caused by our trash. The sight of it caused a reaction in me, and all I could say was, not for me, please. I could not continue to live as I did. Surely I could help out, because I'm a strong kid. From there I decided I will take action and protecting our planet will become my new passion. You too can help out with this phrase that I found. Just say, not for me, please, and stand your own ground. It may take some practice, but I'll show you how and why it's important for us to act now. Let's look at a straw that comes with a shake. Now imagine the trip this straw will soon take. Most often our straws are made out of plastic and after one use, they're thrown in a basket. From the basket, they'll head to the dump or the sea and becoming something known as marine debris. Do you know that about the straws we use sometimes? They end up as marine debris, and then what happens? Our oceans are filled with all sorts of stuff that hurt sea creatures and make their lives rough. Poor turtles and fish mistake trash for their meal. Imagine the pain that their tummies must feel, or worse, they get tangled in our careless muck around fins and heads and legs. They're nothing but stuck. Oh no, that's not good. This one little straw is not worth the high cost. 
why use the things that harm or cause such a great loss? Here's where I'd say, not for me, please. When asked, I don't need a straw that will simply be trashed. We all have a choice. Let's do our small part to refuse to cause harm and decide to act smart. Just think through your actions and the cause and effect of waste and pollution and careless neglect. Let's choose to recycle, reduce, and reuse. And with my strong phrase, there's no way we lose. Here are some examples to show what I mean and how you can join me and begin to act green. So I'm not gonna read the rest of it. There's more examples of things you can do, but it talks about reduce, reuse, recycle. And to just sometimes say, not for me, please. Now this book is for Gavin and Owen, and it is called Pesky Plastic. And it's a little bit related to the book that we just read earlier, but not for me, please, because remember we talked about the straw and the other plastic in the oceans. So we'll see what's in this story. Sally the sea turtle takes a swim in the sea. She's looking for breakfast. Look, Sally, what is that above you? Is it a jellyfish for your breakfast? Do you think it is? Turn the page and see. Oh no, wait! Sally, don't eat that, it's a plastic bag. Plastic can look like jellyfish to a sea turtle. There's that plastic bag up there. Sally does not know that eating plastic will make her sick. Animals cannot tell the difference between plastic and food. That's a problem. Sally the sea turtle and her friends live in the ocean and on coastal beaches. They depend on people to keep the ocean and the rivers clean. So they're depending on us. Here's Pat the Pelican. He flies low over the ocean. Pat's looking for lunch. What is it that Pat sees in the water? Is it a fish? What do you think? What is that? <gasps> oh no, stop Pat, this is not a fish, it's a plastic bag. Pat must be careful. Plastic can look like fish to a pelican. Pat needs to find fish. The ocean has strong currents that carries trash to faraway places. Even on beaches where there are no people, there is plastic trash. Trash that starts out in the California may end up in Hawaii. And if you look at your map, that's a long way away. Pat must find food to survive. If Pat finds more plastic than fish, then Pat may eat plastic by mistake, just like Sally the sea turtle. Do we want that to happen? Alan the albatross waits in his seaside nest for his mother to feed him. What is that, Alan? Is it a snack on the beach? <gasps> Do you think it's a snack for Alan the albatross? Let's turn the page and see. No, Alan, stop! This is a plastic lighter. Plastic is not a snack. Garbage can look like food to a baby albatross. And you know how I told you in the other book there was extra things to learn? Well, this book also has some other things down here that you can read later. So there are other animals in here. Alan lives in a nest next to the sea and he needs a place to live without garbage everywhere. His mother needs to find food to feed him. We can all help save the environment by using less plastic and being more aware of the effect we have on our surroundings. Do you think you can do that? Use less plastic and be aware of your surroundings? Plastic seems easy to use and throw away, but sometimes the easy choice is not the right choice. By finding ways to avoid using plastic, we can reduce pollution it causes. Everyone can make a difference. What can you do to make a difference? There's a good question. Our planet's oceans are all connected. This means that when you help in your neighborhood, you are helping the world. Help stop pesky plastic and become Green Eco Warriors. So here's a question, a kind of a little quiz. Which of these items will help you avoid putting more plastic into the environment? A plastic bag, a foam tray, a lunch bag, a paper bag, plastic wrap, a tote bag, recycle bin, or a reusable Tupperware? I'm not gonna tell you the right answer. I want you to think about it, but it does tell you in the book and at the end of the book, it also shows you how to make a fabric bag. 
so that if you need a bag all the time, you can make one that you can reuse. So that is your pesky plastic book. Ben and Kovan. The book I have for you is called The Bee Book. And there is a lot of information in this book. So I am not gonna read you the whole book. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's in here and then you guys can explore it on your own. But it is very interesting. So at the very beginning of the book, it has a table of contents. You know you've got a big book if it has a table of contents. So it lists the page numbers and the different things that it talks about in this bee book. Like what is a honeybee? And where does honey come from? And why do we need pollination? There's a big word. And how do honeybees talk to each other? And why is there a sting in the tail? So there's lots of questions and information you can answer and you could look at the page number and just skip to that part if you wanted. But I'm gonna read you just a couple special sections. So it starts out about the biggest bee and the littlest bee, which I think is very interesting. And what honeybees do when it's warm and when it's cold and the why do bees buzz that's cool and honey so i'm going to skip way over here to the middle of the book why are there fewer bees around because this gets to why i chose this book when we talk about taking care of the earth why are there fewer bees around there are several factors one climate change the other one is Loss of habitat, so places where the bees used to live, they can't live there anymore. Number three is disease, so there's things happening that are killing off some of the bees, they get sick. And pesticides, which are chemicals people use sometimes to get rid of other things, but it can affect the bees. And this can be a big problem. So what can you do to help? You can Plant bee-friendly plants. So it talks about how to plant bee-friendly plants. Be calm. So give the bees a nice quiet place to be. Don't panic when you see a bee. It's probably not going to bother you. And be in the know. It says become a bee scientist by learning more about bees. Reading this book is a good start. But there's lots more to find out about different types of bees. Get outdoors and watch the bees at work. What do you discover? And spread the word. Bringing people together in your school or community could really help the bees. You could suggest a project to plant more bee-friendly plants in public spaces or make bee hotels with your class. It talks about how to make a bee hotel. So I hope you enjoy the bee book. Read the whole thing and maybe you guys can come up with good ways to help us help the bees. Buzz. This book is for Andrew and Sequavion, and it's called The Wondrous Working of Planet Earth, and it's about ecosystems. And I think you probably have studied about ecosystems a little bit already in your life, but I want you to show this also has a table of contents. And what I think is really cool about this book is it talks about the ecosystems all over the world and how they're different. So you can look again, if you wanted to see about the ecosystems in Africa, it lists about four ecosystems. It talks about the Congo rainforest, the African savanna, the Sahara Desert, and the Cape of Africa. And all those places in Africa are different ecosystems. So the book gives you an introduction about ecosystems in general and then talks about all these different places. So I'm just gonna go to one specific place and show you in the book, and you're gonna have to read about all the others on your own. So this is in Europe, and this is the moorland in the British Isles. And the moorland is sort of a wet place. If you remember this summer when we went up to Maumee Bay State Park and we saw the marshes, well, the moorlands in the British Isles are similar to that. And there's certain kinds of animals and certain kinds of plants that are particular to this area that help the world. And when those start shrinking up, we have a lot of problems. 
So I'm not gonna read you all the specifics here, but it talks about the biggest benefits of the moorlands and the greatest threats. So I'm just gonna read you the benefits and the threats of this area. And it's very tiny print, so I have to move my glasses. People and animals depend on the moors as foundations of their food supply. The bogs supply clean drinking water and provide rich grazing for flocks of sheep. The peatland that stretches across Europe is also an important global carbon sink. You know, I have to ask grandpa about peat. Carbon sinks naturally store carbon in places other than our atmosphere and are an important part of the carbon cycle. So those are the benefits. The greatest threat. Overgrowing and poorly planning farming have started to dry up the moors. Global warming is also causing more out of control wildfires. To combat this, conservationists and landowners are working to mindfully allow the wetlands to fill with water, sometimes helping the process along by digging ditches with explosives. So they're like blowing up places so that more water can get in so that the moors can replenish. So that's just one page in this very big book with lots of cool stuff. So I am interested for you to read this and then tell me what place you thought was most fascinating in planet Earth. And this final book is for Ethan because once everybody graduates from high school, I think they have their own books that they're reading in college and things. So I did have books this year for Shia Savante. So Ethan, you're the oldest that's still in high school. This is called The Future of Life by Edward O. Wilson. And I'm just gonna read you the description on the back of the book and then show you something interesting inside. One of the world's most important scientists, Edward O. Wilson, is also an abundantly talented writer who has twice won the Pulitzer Prize. In this, his most personal and timely book to date, he assesses the precarious state of our environment, examining the mass extinctions occurring in our time and the natural treasures we are about to lose forever. Yet rather than espousing doomsday prophecies, he spells out a specific plan to save our world while there is still time. His vision is a hopeful one, as economically sound as it is environmentally necessary. Eloquent, practical, and wise, this book should be read and studied by anyone concerned with the fate of our natural world. So I think it's a very good book. I know you read a lot of fiction, and this is a nonfiction book, but I hope you will read it. I am interested to see what you say about it. The prologue, which is the very beginning of the book, he writes and he pretends like he's writing to Henry David Thoreau. And I just point that out because when I was your age, I loved reading Thoreau. And I read his Walden Pond and I even wrote an English paper about it. So read the prologue and then maybe you might also want to read some about Thoreau because Thoreau went out in the woods to be by himself and just in nature for a while and talked about uh, what he learned by doing that. So I thought that that was kind of cool that he's talking to Thoreau in here. So enjoy the future of life. So I hope you enjoy these books this year. And I hope you do spend some time thinking when you're outside playing and swimming and hiking, growing gardens and picking flowers you think about how we take care of our world. And you know, when God first created this earth, he told us to take care of it. And so I think it's a responsibility that we all have to do a good job of taking care of our air and our water and our plants and our animals and the people also around us. So enjoy your books and tell me what you think when you finish reading them. Let's go.
I'm wild and living. Glory gang is winning. Grateful for the privilege. Go out and be the difference. We don't have to tell them. They know we the Christians. Go out and make a mark till the earth stops spinning. And it's good to be home, but I'm ready to hit the road. What's the song with no message? It has to impact a soul. Holding on, let it go. Who feel you had to your toes? And I don't mean to be rude, but I gotta yell at you no. Tell the world. Young, wild, and we living it up. He came in and he saved my soul. Young, wild, and we living it up. Come on, everybody, let's go Young, wild, and we living it up He came in and he saved my soul Young, wild, and we living it up Come on, everybody, let us go. To the sea, from the west to the east, by the power of the spirit manifested in me. It's too good to be true. Why's it hard to believe in a God that's so good? Breathe his life in the me. Sipping coffee on the plane, fly the tenant, checking names. I'ma hit you when I land, get my luggage at the claims. Life is changing just a bit. Now that people know my name, pushing closer to God, how I'm adjusting the fame. Young, wild, and we living it up. He came in and he saved my soul. Young, wild, and we living it up. Come on, everybody, let's go Young, wild, and we living it up He came in and he saved my soul Young, wild, and we living it up Get up, come on, everybody, let's go Young, wild, and living because We're forgiven, we young Wild, and living because We're forgiven, we young Wild, and living because We're forgiven, we young Wild, and living because We're Young, wild, and we living it up He came in and he saved my soul Young, wild, and we living it up Get up, come on, everybody, let's go Young, wild, and we living it up He came in and he saved my soul Young, wild, and we living it up